got the party started in the UK, but it was an American boy that helped introduce Estelle to the world. Her ability to mix numerous musical genres together allowed her to stand out in a major way amongst her peers in the industry. All of her talent and success, however, couldn't prevent her from experiencing betrayal and heartbreak at the hands of those she cherished most and sent her on a journey to discover happiness again. Let's find out whatever happened to British singer, songwriter, rapper, record producer, and actress, Estelle. Estelle Fanta Soiree came into the world on January 18, 1980, in Hammersmith, West London, England. She is the second born of nine children to her Senegalese mother and Grenadian father. Her early musical influences were what her parents had on heavy rotation in the house, like soca, reggae, dancehall, African, and Caribbean music. So naturally, she developed a taste for a variety of artists and genres, as well, such as British rock band Queen, American jazz singer Ella Fitzgerald, and Jamaican reggae artist Dennis Brown. Even though Estelle was introduced to the world as a singer, rapping was actually her first love, and by her late teens, she was writing her own music and performing at numerous London clubs. Her breakthrough single, 1980, off her debut album, Free, hit the streets in 2004. The album also produced two other successful singles that no doubt helped Estelle win Best Newcomer at the MOBO Awards, a UK annual music award presentation honoring achievements in music of Black origin, including hip hop, R&B, soul, reggae, jazz, gospel, and African music. Even though it seemed like things were going well for her initially, Estelle soon had a rude awakening about what kind of sacrifices she would have to make to achieve worldwide stardom. After a couple of struggle years of butting heads with her UK label, Estelle ultimately decided to pack her bags and take the big leap across the pond to New York City to get her career back on track. The reason is quite simple. The pursuit of a truly successful music career in the R&B genre was presenting itself to be a very tough task in the United Kingdom. There was also an often unspoken and downplayed secondary component to that belief, colorism. Even people in Estelle's own inner circle, unfortunately, bought into the madness. One friend, or ex-friend now, said that because of her dark skin and prominent African features, her career would and could only go so far. Estelle also became aware very quickly that trying to establish herself as a musical force to be reckoned with in the US would also mean changing how she presented herself to the American public. At this time, she decided to focus solely on singing and put rapping on the back burner since her British accent was apparently a turnoff to American fans of the genre. Before she got settled in the Big Apple permanently, she had already spent several years traveling back and forth between London and the US. But on one trip in particular, she bumped into a VIP in LA that would be instrumental in taking her career to the next level. Estelle just happened to be hanging outside of one of the city's most famous eateries, Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles, where she noticed someone inside, superstar rapper, songwriter, record producer, and fashion designer, Kanye West. She patiently waited for him to exit the restaurant, and when he did, she made her move. She introduced herself and proceeded to ask him about getting in touch with John Legend, who had already been a featured producer on her first album. Kanye ended up inviting Estelle to his studio to not only connect with John, but so they could all begin working on her next album together. At this point, the stars couldn't have been any more perfectly aligned. Estelle would have the honor of being the first artist to sign with John's homeschool label, and the following year, her sophomore album Shine was released in 2008. Though it was her second album, it was the first to be released in the U.S. The American influence undeniably took over the album with features from the likes of Will I Am, Mark Ronson, CeeLo, and John Legend, who also served as executive producer. But it was her Grammy-winning, double-platinum smash hit, American Boy, featuring Kanye, and inspired by all the cuties that she was meeting in Miami while recording the record, that made everyone sit up and take notice. In addition to her first Grammy win, the album also garnered her two more MOBO awards that she happily jetted back to the UK to accept in person. It was actually on the very night of the award show that things suddenly started to unravel. 
A little birdie told her to keep a close eye on the people around her because they were not what they seemed. Of course, after hearing this, the night came to an abrupt end and the four walls of Estelle's hotel room got an earful of her pain and anger. In a 2012 interview with The Independent Online, she recalls that night saying, these were people I thought I could trust, but I was wrong. A lot of things were happening behind the scenes. They were taking advantage of me. I was working, 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 barely seeing 20%. But why? They were mothers who I should have probably dumped a long time before. But you know how it is. You're on the road a lot, away from home and family, and you want to have people around you that you like, that you can trust. After taking some time to tour and just focus on herself, Estelle poured all of those vulnerable, happy, sad, depressed, and joyful life experiences into what would end up being her third album, All of Me. Everything came together when the timing was right and it was finally released in 2012. She revealed in an interview that she, in fact, ended the long-term relationship that inspired much of the album's content the very next day after she shot the video for the lead single, Break My Heart, and two weeks after the gut-wrenching second single, Thank You, was recorded. She also made a point of including a lot more rapping this time around, which she always wanted to showcase in her music. The following year, Estelle would take on several different ventures to expand her creative arsenal. She finally decided to do what many artists feel compelled to do, who want to take creative control of their work. She announced that she was launching an independent label in partnership with BMG, with whom she had already had an established relationship with as a writer for the last 10 years. Around the same time, Estelle also began using her vocal cords for something other than singing when she became the voice of Garnet in the animated series Steven Universe. And if that wasn't enough, she also launched a luxury collection of scarves, aptly titled Scarves by Soiree, which is her last name. Love and relationships continue to be a major theme in Estelle's music. And if we're keeping it real, it is one of the best themes to sing about, since it's something every human being can relate to. So it's only fitting that True Romance, her appropriately titled fourth album, touches on the many emotions one experiences during the transition between ending one relationship and beginning a new one. Estelle finally honored her fans' request for years to do a full-length reggae album and dropped Lover's Rock, her last album to date, in 2018. The title is named for the subgenre of reggae music that focuses on love songs in particular, functioning kind of like the R&B of reggae. The album also represents a full circle moment in the fact that Estelle grew up listening to a lot of reggae music played by her parents, and the themes in Lover's Rock are largely based on the dynamics of her parents' relationship. Throughout the making of the album and listening to all the stories she was told, Estelle began to discover and better understand why she duplicated some of their experiences in her own relationships. While Estelle prides herself in taking her time to produce her music and counts on her fans' patience as they await her next album, she always remains in creative mode, looking for different ways to express herself. In 2020, she added Radio Host to her already multi-hyphenated name, with the debut of The Estelle Show on Apple Music. In a promo video on their Twitter page, she explained what fans can expect, saying, The essence of The Estelle Show is essentially like you're in my living room at my mom's house, my mom's yard, my brothers and sisters kicking it throughout various stages of my life. You're gonna hear some good music, you're gonna hear some banter. It's gonna be vibes, the world of Estelle. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video and subscribe for more amazing content. See you next time.